Live from Shadowmere Studios, it's the Talkie Box Podcast. Plop, plop, fizz, fizz. Oh, what a relief it is. <laughs> All right, hold on now. That is, is what is this? Um, Alka Seltzer, not a sponsor? Right, yeah. Okay. okay. Yep. It's very digestive. <laughs> yeah. Very digestive. Yeah, it's got a lot of. Makes me think of bowels. Cool. That's yep. what it should be. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't know if that's really the, the flavor I want to start the show with. You well, know? I, we can't go back on it now. Oh, uh, what? Uh, don't they have, they have new flavors, right? It's like uh, cherry flavored. Uh, point over here, like I've had all shit you, written you down. You got all this Alka stuff Seltzer. written like, down. All of the Alka Seltzer. <laughs> You're holding a pin. Yeah. You got yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Cherry. Yeah. They got the lemon lime, right? Lemon lime. Mint, I think. Do they and, have uh, mint? Why not? Why the hell not? Yeah. Right? There should be a mint. <laughs> oh, man. I'm not sure how I'd feel about, you know, Fizzy mint. I don't know. I don't just, think like uh, it. just three of us tonight. Just the three of us. Yeah. Building Back castles. To the in the, the sky. original trio. That's yeah. right. For the of, uh, for those that are listening. Yeah. In their cars. Yeah. You got Dave. That's, that's me. You. The host with the most boast. No, that's Maxwell Blankman. Oh. Everybody knows that. Okay. <laughs> Everybody who's anybody and knows. Possibly Max. John Oliver as well. Is, yes, you think? he's the hostess, most boastess, or something like that. Oh, most okay. boastess, or something like that. Yeah. I don't know, but he's I, not on the show though. He, but Jason be. is. Hashtag at John Oliver. Yeah. Why do you look at that let's, camera? Let's have lunch. There you go. Look at the one that actually shows your face. That one shows his face in higher I mean, if definition. I, if so I look show at that my one. face. <laughs> At a camera, it's going to show my face. <laughs> I suppose so. This isn't like the vampire camera. Yeah. This is Jason showing his face. And then Justin. Hey! Hey. Hey. <laughs> and that's, uh, that's it tonight. And that's all of us. Work and sickness has uh, kept us from having a fourth tonight. Uh, isn't it always the case? Apparently. I do need a doctor's note from both of them, though. Yeah. Just, just for the files. I want to make sure that they're not contagious. Right. Um... Be it in illness or extra work, mm -hmm. whenever they come back around. Are you are you now head of the HR department for that? Yeah, yeah, I have to I have to keep all of this buttoned up pretty tight. Gotcha, that makes sense. <clears throat> See, I don't. I don't. I mean, somebody has to do it, right? I don't get sick because I just stay you, you sick. You just are sick. Yeah, just in general. If I just yeah, if I just stay contagious all the time, I don't really have to worry about like yeah. the oh, now I'm sick or. Oh, you your know. cough is never worse than it is right now, but it's never better either. Exactly. It's very <laughs> I static. I just maintain a durable level of uh -huh. sickness. Right. Just the same amount of mucus. Uh, it's it's lining. kind of like covering yourself in zombie blood during a zombie apocalypse okay. so that you can slip through the crowd of mm -hmm. zombies. So you're yeah. like licking toilet seats on the regular. Every day. <laughs> Every day. Just, uh, oh. Oh. Just, just it sustains the illness. Yeah. Brush the teeth, <laughs> lick the toilet. Boom. <laughs> yeah, that's... Wait, are you, are you only licking your toilet? Method. Uh, well, I mean, it's, you're not good. You gotta it's, lick other toilets. I I try to get out more often. Yeah, your and best bet would probably be like a men's room, like someplace busy, I like, like CNN Center, state like, line like in the rest urinal. stops. Yep. Oh yeah, state yeah. line rest stops. Yeah. That's where that's the best really good. through traffic is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and if you're lucky, you'll get like some hepatitis or something. That'll really carry you over. Get. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't want this clearing up or anything. Yeah, me and hepatitis. Oh man, we go back. This is one of the grossest things we've ever talked about. <laughs> yeah, and show. right at the open of the show. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's. I feel like it was the Alka Seltzer thing yeah. that yep. started us down Listen, this road. If he did if this, warn you. If this is your first episode of Talkie Box, sorry. <laughs> not not sorry. sorry. Not sorry. <laughs> What's? I mean, everybody poops. That's true. And a number of people lick toilets. A number. Yes. <laughs> a number of people yep. like toilets. There's at least one of them. <laughs> at least. I mean, we know of at least one of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. You, we're talking about you. Yeah, wrap it up. Uh, Where are we toilet. going? Yeah, I'm definitely getting out of this conversation. <laughs> yeah. uh, I had an eventful weekend. Tell me oh, more. Shit. I went on a pub crawl. Ooh. And it was awesome. Harry Potter pub crawl. Harry Potter okay, pub crawl. Explain yeah. pub crawl. All right, so in pub case crawl. there are non uh, pub crawlers. I guess technically anybody can do a pub crawl whenever they want. It's, it's just basically just going from bar to bar to bar, you know. But typically and a you, pub crawl is put together by some group or organization, and it's typically a theme, I guess. This particular one was was Harry Potter themed, and so uh, we were in the Virginia Highlands of Atlanta. 
Nice. Um, great, great area. I've, I've I've been going down there for a long time. I love those bars down there. And we and we went to like five different bars. Each one had a different themed shot that you got for free with your purchase of a ticket to the um, to the pub crawl. And they had other stuff going on. They had a wand making station. Hmm. Um, Interesting. They had a little scavenger hunt kind of not not really a scavenger. It, it was like a list of things you could do and get like punches on a card for to end up getting something. We didn't fuck with it. I don't give a shit. Um, fuck it. Yeah. We I had butter beer. How was, was that? Cool. It was good. I think I think all it is. Uh, sorry if I'm giving away a recipe. Uh, butterscotch snobs and cream soda. That's Absolutely. pretty much all it was. Yeah. Yeah, it was delicious though. It was fantastic. Yeah. I love cream soda, so it was I great. I felt like I've, I feel like I have told you in our past life that it was something that you would really enjoy. Really? I, I think I tried it at some place, mm -hmm. some kind of a Harry Potter get together. Yeah. And it was, it was quite. That's good. all it was. Yeah. That was, uh, yeah. It was fantastic. I liked Just it. Just a lot. warm, uh, very vanilla butterscotch. Yeah. This was on ice though, but it was still good. Yeah, see, I'm not a big fan of cream soda or butterscotch, yeah. so it doesn't seem like it'd be up my alley. I don't typically like butterscotch that much, but I'd love me some cream soda. So yeah, that's not, made not, not for me. Yeah. Not for me. And then uh we you know we, we went on this pub crawl, had a great time, and then afterwards was Rocky Horror Picture Show. Oh nice at the Plaza Theater in, in Atlanta. Did, did you, you did you do the time warp Dave? Yeah. Live. It was a live show, right? Yeah. Well, the, well they, every every Friday night, this, the Plaza Theater in Atlanta on, on Ponce does uh, does the Rocky Horror Picture Show, and, and they it's have the like movie with like live actors uh -huh. in front of it, yeah. sort of portraying the as characters. the movie plays. Yeah. yeah. And then there's you know a lot all of, the wild off the stage yeah, antics that yeah. accompany it. Which I'd never been to that before. I've seen the movie before several times. I've, I think I think I had the DVD at one point. I think I loaned it to somebody, but um, you know, but. If you, if you ever want to go to one of these shows, watch the movie first so you know what you're watching because you are not going to hear it once you go in there. No. You're going to miss a lot of what the actual movie is. Yeah, you don't um, go to something like that to see the movie for the first time. No, no. That's but not... definitely, I, I highly recommend going to check it out. It's a lot of fun. Great time. I've heard it's like the only way to really experience the movie. Is it's, to, it's a pretty special Like experience. there's There's like things being thrown on the stage. Yeah. and This place actually discourages that. Because um, I know that there's something, like I said, this is the first time I've ever been to one, but they did mention something about toast, and I know that like toast gets thrown at some point in a lot of these. And they're like, please don't throw your fucking toast. <laughs> I know there's, I know there's at least one part when, uh, like, because my dad always told me about it, believe it mm -hmm. or not, when we were growing up, where they they pull the sheet off of the table and it's uh, meatloaf. Yeah. In there, Eddie. Eddie, yeah. yeah, and the the whole crowd is supposed to rub meatloaf for dinner again. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. They they uh. <laughs> I'm just attentive. <laughs> I'm paying attention. Yeah, but this this particular night, because of the Harry Potter pub crawl, they did Rocky Horror Potter show, and so instead of dressing the characters up like from Rocky Horror, they dressed them up like the Harry Potter characters in Rocky Horror, and so you have and I I'm, I might be able to throw a picture up later on. Um, on the website or on Facebook or something of uh, Dumbledore as Doctor Frankenfurter, which was <laughs> fantastic. It was it was really well done. It's a you know way to go, Mark Sturcon, I think is who put together the uh, the pub crawl and then the Plaza Theater. Great job with um, Plaza Theater and Lips Down on Dixie. Great job with with Harry Potter. Or, wow. uh, Sounds Rocky like a Horror. very graphic name. Lips Down on Dixie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that was a uh, that was an awesome Friday night, and then Saturday was my niece's birthday. She turned eighteen, so I feel old. And and we went uh, we went to dinner at like Ted's Montana Grill. Had a nice bison burger. Not a sponsor. Not a sponsor, but still a good burger. Yeah, bison's delicious. And then we went to an escape Big room. Big fan of bison. You ever been to an escape room? Yes. This yeah? was a lot of fun. Yeah. You ever been? No. No. I highly recommend it. You there would. Is, you. There is no room that can contain me. Yeah. No, that's the whole point. You're yeah, supposed, you're supposed to try to and escape. Yeah, but it's out. more of a mental yeah. thing. Yeah, done. <laughs> I'm already out. Yep. So cool. what was your theme? So, what was the theme to your room? So here's the thing. So we, we get there. There's a group of us. There's like my niece and her friends. And there's myself, my brother and his wife, and a couple of, you know, a couple of adults. And so we got two rooms. The kids got one called... Um, uh, uh, fuck. It's not called <laughs> really? Fuck. <laughs> No, it was um, Enigma. <laughs> it was called Enigma, and okay. it, it was like a World War II theme thing. Okay. Uh, ours, the adult one, was called Amnesia, and the theme was like 
you're trying to figure out something about this mental patient, like who he is and why he's in the in the hospital and stuff like that. And so, like fun. so we get in there, like we we get into our room, and like there's a little video that plays, and we have an hour to get out. Like there's there's a clock that's ticking down, ticking down time. And so we're we're you know we're figuring stuff out. We're getting some locks unlocked. We're figuring you know finding these files and stuff. And uh, they had told us before we go in that there's some like in our particular room there's some scary elements to it. We're like okay, we'll see. You know, it's a little little spook, little creep. And so about ten ish minutes in, uh, the lights kind of flash a little bit. And like there's there's a lamp that was on and a lamp that was off. And the lamp that was on kind of flashed and like went out for a second and came back on. The other lamp like flash like three times and then that was it We're like oh okay there's a little spook okay a little spook okay. a little spook about 20 minutes now we figured out there was like this uh bookshelf over here we're pretty sure it was a door it gets into another room right we're like there's got to be a way into this thing gotta be about 20 minutes in lights go out and this door opens and we're like oh who touched what what did we just do this door is open all right let's go in there let's check it out let's see what's going on when we start looking in there's a couple lights in there that are on and then um, suddenly we hear they they give you this like little walkie talkie so that in case, you know, you you just can't figure it out. You need a hint. You can call them up or, if or, you know, whatever reason they can, you know, you can communicate with the people who run the place. So this walkie talkie goes off just as I'm looking up at the screen where the uh, the time is and notice that the time's not on it. And uh, the radio goes, yeah, power went out. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So it turns out we didn't find what opened this door. Like the power went out and this door just opened. And like the power went out in the entire block. Not just the building, not not just the room, not just the building, like the entire block that this place was at, the apartments next door, all the power is out. <laughs> 20 minutes in and we're like damn. And you didn't think anything of it at first because there were some. Yeah, they told elements. us it was going to be scooby. Like, all right, let, you know, this is this they're, is they're getting doing real. This really, this like these times yeah, are perfect. We were impressed. These you know? Well, I, so, I, I I did an escape room uh, probably uh, about a month or two ago. Oh yeah. And uh, did you invite us? No, it was for it was a day job, okay. corporate thing. All right. Um, and uh, it, it's so funny how different how the different themes play out. And they didn't have us walkie talkies. They had like a, a speaker system. Like okay. somebody would come over a PA. Um, and our theme was, uh, it was a, a mobster uh -huh. with a, an Italian restaurant as a front. And we had to figure out what his offshore account number was oh, okay. and where the money was going. Yeah. And then also defuse a bomb for some reason. Mm. It was actually a lot of fun. I mean, you, you have to think critically and you have to yeah. like look at stuff and like find all the clues and start putting pieces together. Um, and you have to work together. You have to work together. That's a big deal. With like these everybody things. split up, and then let's talk about what we're seeing while we're yeah. doing it. And that was one of the really cool parts about it was that uh, we would talk about what we were seeing. Like, all right, I see a hole here. My hand can fit into it, but I don't know. There's something going on with this. Well, I just found this thing over here. Quick, get on the lap. And just a lot of back and forth going on. Yeah. And it it's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd love to go do it again because. Um, Definitely a lot of critical thinking. That's why I think you would really enjoy it is because you have to put together clues and yeah. paint this picture. Yeah, it was really cool. And and sadly, you know, the power didn't come back on while we were there. Like we, we stuck around for another like half hour. Did you get your money and, back? Yeah, they well they they said we'd you know, we could come back at we can set up a date to come back again. Yeah, they, um, they're they're gonna hold on to that money. You just yeah. come on back later. Which I mean, we'd still like to go, so right. I mean that's fine. It's um, not their fault but, the power went out. Yeah, but getting that it? particular group of people together might be different. You know, this was like some kids that are in school and, you know, other people. So, you know, it's it's it sucks that it, that we didn't get to finish it, but it was still, the time we were there, really fun time. That's awesome. Yeah. What else did you get into this weekend? Um, went and saw the, like, they did the Knights of Lights over at uh, Lake Lanier. God, you are a busy go. person, aren't you? This weekend was, yeah, it was a pretty busy weekend. Hopping. Yeah, that's where you get in your car and you pay like a, a toll booth or whatever, and then mm -hmm. you drive through real slow in this long line, and you see yep. all the different themes as you go along. Yeah, and, and the themes are uh, sort of Christmas based, but also like very corporate based. So there's like Coca, there's like a Coca Cola area and a Georgia Power area, and uh, <laughs> a couple other little things like that. Nice uh, there, there's also like the Twelve Days of Christmas area, and the, there's a Wizard of Oz area for whatever reason. 
Interesting. But yeah, was, I was there with my again with my my niece and and my brother and his family and stuff. So, hmm. but yeah, we drove through it. They also have uh, Lake Lanier Islands has the the water park, um, but you know it's cold, so they turned it into like a little fair with like a Ferris wheel and all kinds of rides and stuff. So we went over there for a little while. It was cold. I didn't like it. <laughs> I didn't like the cold. I enjoyed the Not time I was there. Not a Not fan, a of, fan the cold. of the cold. Yeah. Fair enough. I went to um, Sweetwater Brewing Company yeah. yesterday. Not a sponsor, though we'd love to have you. Absolutely. Honestly, we'd just love it. Um, apparently, every other Monday, they do a, uh, a stand-up comedy show. Hmm. I did not know this. Um, so I, I, I went out there, and uh, you get some beers with it for free, and then you can in, buy beers. Is this in Duluth? No, this is um, in Atlanta. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, at the brewery itself. Gotcha. And um, they just have this little upstairs bar area. You get two beers for free, and then you can buy beers, $5 a pop after that, mm -hmm. and just sit there and enjoy about an hour and a half of comedy. And it was a really good time. Yeah. Some of the jokes were really good. Some of the comedians were not great. <laughs> but that's to be expected when you're going to a local comedy show. I was gonna ask, are these local comedians? Local like comedians. Uh, you know, we, we didn't have any huge headliners or anything like that, mm -hmm. but still pretty good lineup for what it was. I enjoyed cool. myself for sure. Yeah. Definitely worth checking out. Yeah. What about you, Jason? What'd you get into? Nothing. Cool. <laughs> cool. Yeah. I had an yeah. uneventful weekend. God, I'm so jealous. Yeah. Just like in all, all honesty, the idea of just doing nothing just, seems mm. so appealing. Yeah. Maxing, Tip relaxing. Typically I have to work every weekend. I, I took this weekend off for, for these things I was, planning on so Ooh. but yeah i it was nice to have a weekend where i could go out and do things with my friends and not have to worry about being at work and slaving over hot grill <laughs> yeah i would love to have just that saturday sunday off consistently yeah. you know friday night saturday sunday mm -hmm. you can get so much done in those two or nothing days. or nothing which is also very nice yeah very appealing yeah you can get something done this weekend do nothing next weekend yep I'm going on vacation soon. I plan on doing a lot of nothing. Yeah? A lot of nothing. Are you going on vacation or are you just taking a vacation? I'm taking a vacation. I might go down to uh, Florida for a few days yeah. just to pop in on the pops. Okay. Um, but other than that, I have a lot of laziness planned out. <laughs> it's going to be wonderful. Right. So, uh, Thanksgiving. Yeah. Right around the corner. Yep. Very much right around the corner. Yeah. By the time uh, this comes out, this video comes out, it will have already happened. It will have already happened. Yeah. I wanted to, to take a little bit of time and go over like the most popular or our favorite Thanksgiving foods we look forward to. Mm -hmm. Go you, on. What are you doing? He's going to pee. Yeah. Couldn't have done that before the show. I did do that before the show. Couldn't he have... did a terrible job. Yep. And he's going to knock go. everything knock over. Knock over that camera. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Just a little... Matrix. <laughs> Jingle it up. Mm, perfect. <laughs> All right. Well, like I was saying, wanted to uh, to talk about our favorite foods yeah. that we're looking forward to that some of us might not get this year. Why? Oh, well, I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm working on Thanksgiving, so there's uh, okay. very little this is, opportunity This is my family. first Thanksgiving that I actually get to spend with my family in six years. I almost always have Thanksgiving off. Yeah. I volunteered this year so I could have Christmas Eve and uh, New Year's Eve off. Okay. Yeah, this this year, uh, you know, I, I the the my previous day job, Thanksgiving was the busiest day of the year for us. And so I always had to work. And that sucked. Yeah, that always sucks. Um, I got to spend time with, you know, people I liked at, at work and stuff. And also people I didn't like at work and stuff. And... <sighs> There's always a good batch. Yeah. Uh, but... But this year, I'm, I'm actually going to drive down and see the family down in South Georgia and uh, eat me some deviled eggs, because that's my favorite food on Thanksgiving or any holiday, it turns out. Deviled eggs, huh? Yeah, man. Not a fan of deviled eggs. No? Don't like deviled eggs. Oh, they're I'm so a, good. I'm a big fan of mashed potatoes, but you mm. can have that any time of yeah. year. Uh, I also really, really like green bean casserole, mm. believe it or not. Jason rejoins the show. Yep. Did you Squeezes get? Squeezes by the the camera. Don't squeeze your bladder too much. <laughs> You'll pee your pants. You have to leave again. Uh, not unlike Forrest Gump, I drank way too much Dr Pepper. <laughs> That's what you get. But yeah, deviled eggs are delicious, and you're stupid. <laughs> no, not for me. 
I like you, me some you, green bean casserole. Do you like casserole? them with the relish or without the relish? Um. Oh, you mean mixed in? Yeah, yeah. I like it with the relish. I do not like it with the relish. Uh, it's, I don't know why. It's kind of, it's creamier without the relish, mm. but I feel like the relish kind of acts in it. It gives it little... Accident? Accents it. It gives it little, <laughs> like, chewy morsels. Yeah. Uh, and the yeah. right dose of paprika on top. It's like walnuts in a, in a brownie. Yeah, yeah, I don't like that either. See, I didn't for the longest time, mm. and then I started looking forward to them like little salty morsels in there. A nice little texture. That's the thing that I've always been a weird weird with textures. I didn't like onions for a long time because of that weird crunch they have. I don't like now I love onion. them. I don't oh, like I, raw onions. I prefer raw onions. No. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. So what's what's your favorite uh Thanksgiving Day dessert? I I'm, feel... I'm not a big dessert guy. No? No. I usually fill up on on the turkey on the main mashed potatoes and double eggs. Mm -hmm. And then I've never like I've I know my family makes a lot of pies and stuff, and I, I'm, I'm not a big pie. I prefer cake over pie. Oh, pie so, all day. Yeah. Give me a nice buttery, flaky crust with a filling. Mm. I'd probably say up between cherry pie and pumpkin pie. Yeah. Cherry pie and pumpkin pie. You? I love pecan. Mm. Uh, big fan of pecan. Pecan or pecan? I said pecan. You did. And you did say that. And, and then, then he questioned and I it. I stand beside it. All right. I read something once that apparently... Uh, Neither of those is correct. It, it's because you're either you're either uh, saying pecan, which is emphasizing both syllables, or pecan, which is not really emphasizing either syllable, and it should be like a pecan, pecan, or pecan. So, I want to say it's pecan, isn't it? I don't know. Pecan. I don't care. I don't like them either. Pecan either pie. Yeah. Pecan pie. Pecan pie. I th all right. Well, I think we all know that it's delicious, and it's very sugary. It is very sugary. It's because it's pretty much just pure sugar with yeah. pecans on top. Yeah. Yep. I, I burnt myself out on pecans a long time ago. Or pecans or whatever. So we had one pecans. we had a we had a we had a pecan tree. Pecan tree. Pecan tree. Mm-hmm. Pocket tree. Pocket tree. When I was growing up. And so, you know, we had a lot of them. And then eventually I was like, you know what? I'm done. I'm out. I'm done. I'm good. No more for the rest of my life, pretty much. Caribbean or Caribbean? Mm -hmm. Uh, are we talking Pirates of the Caribbean, or are we talking like Caribbean cruise? <laughs> I'm talking about well, the Caribbean Caribbeans Queen. or mm -hmm. the Caribbeans. I mean, it just the really, Caribbean islands or the Caribbean islands. It just depends on which islands that you're talking about. Which ones oh. are you going to? It depends <laughs> on the islands. And the, <laughs> it depends on the islands and the occasion. It just yeah. sounds better in different lights. It does. Okay. So, I mean, it's it's Pirates of the Caribbean, right? Not the Pirates of the Caribbean. Right. Right. Because the not... Caribbean sounds way too relaxed. Yeah. Caribbean. For, for pirates. I, yeah. I have always referred to it as the Caribbean Sea, though. The Caribbean Sea, but parts of the Caribbean, and also Caribbean Queen. Caribbean Queen? Caribbean Queen. I don't know the rest a of that. A Caribbean song. cruise or a Caribbean cruise? Uh, Carnival Cruise. <laughs> Big Red Boat. <laughs> not a sponsor. <laughs> we have no sponsors, in yeah. case you guys haven't figured that out. Not and yet. if any of these big corporate entities hear our show, and are not offended by what we've said, we'd love to talk yeah, business. Big Red Talkie Box. <laughs> I'll we'll put, change our logo. Yeah, I'll put some mouse ears on this guy. Absolutely. <laughs> He'd look great in mouse ears. He would. Wink, wink. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we talked about uh, Thanksgiving foods. Yeah, we did. Um, other traditions, there's uh, football I like watching. How you you kind of subtly implied... That you brought it up. Oh, I definitely, I brought it up, yeah. <laughs> right? When I went to the bathroom, you guys heard what I was talking about in there. Thanksgiving food! It's not like we'd already started talking about it when you, you, you just off. walked up. Just <laughs> so, go on. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, football, but, you know, we don't really talk about sports. No, we don't. I, don't. I, don't, I couldn't tell you anything about what's going on in football right mm -hmm. now. But the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Now, all of us will probably sleep through that. But, yeah, absolutely. But you might remember being younger uh -huh. and, like, getting up and watching it just because it meant, like, hey, we're one day closer to Christmas. Like, it does, this it is does a, this feel This is a specific that way. marker that says, get ready. I suppose it does, Christmas yeah. is coming. You're going to get some presents pretty soon. The only reason I ever watched it is because my, my, my mom always wanted to watch it. So that's what was playing on the TV in the living room. So look up the uh, the Thanksgiving Day Parode. Parode. The Parode, yeah. The Parode Float List. Write that down. 
What are you doing? The Thanksgiving Day Parode List. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look up Parode especially. We'll wait. We'll pause the entire yeah. show. Yeah, for just this. just stop just, right here because yeah. Jason requested information. Uh, I'll dance for him. <laughs> Please stop. You're gonna All make right. him turn off. <laughs> That's just for the people in their cars. <laughs> Now they usually have uh, what Superman, right? Probably, yeah. Uh, they got uh, Bart Simpson, right? Usually, yeah, typically. Garfield. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yep. I hate Mondays. Um, <laughs> that's it, right? That's it's all like a three float yeah. parade. Three, three like, big balloons. That's it. There's like six thousand mimes. Snoopy. Snoopy. Yeah. All right, here we go. Here are a list of celebrities that will be at this year's Thanksgiving Day Parade. We've got. 98 degrees. Didn't realize they were still a celebrity. Yeah, no. Lauren Elena. No, Cam. No. Sabrina Carpenter. No. Andra Day in Common. Common, I know who that is. Yeah. Sarah Evans. Eh. Jimmy Fallon and The Roots. Okay. Flo Rida. Yeah. Goo Goo Dolls. Oh, yeah. Cat Graham. Nope. Andy Grammer. Mm hmm. Angelica Hale. Mm hmm. Olivia Holt. Mm hmm. Nikki Jam. Wyclef John. All right, I know him. <laughs> Padma Lachki and Tom Colicchio of Top Chef. Dustin Lynch. Miss America 2018, Kara Mund. Leslie Odom Jr. Bebe Rexha. Smokey Robinson. And Jojo Siwa. All right, so... So, like, no one five, I'm looking forward to see. Five people right. I recognize out of a list of, like... 20 people. A list that was too long to have read on the show. All right, here we go. Oh, God. We're going on with the uh, floats at the Thanksgiving Day Parade. We have the Aflac Duck. All right. So is, is this... Is this <laughs> the a, Angry Birds Red. Who hold the fuck on? <laughs> All right. Is th we're going to talk right. about this. This is not a fucking segment for you. <laughs> All right. Now, the Aflac Duck. Is this in an order of appearance? Or is this alphabetical? It this alphabetical. this appears to be alphabetical. Okay. See, I but would, it could be an appearance. I would prefer it in order of appearance so that we could discuss it as though, like, we are the Macy's Day announcers. Uh, anyway, uh, the Aflac duck um, is probably just going to be a big, stupid duck. I don't really... <laughs> big, stupid with, with duck. With Gilbert Gottfried's voice. Yeah. Uh, is it going to say anything? You probably don't have any... It's going to say Aflac. This year's float says. sees the return of Harold the Baseball Player, the blown-up figure featured in the holiday classic Miracle on 34th Street. In celebration of the film's 70th anniversary, 20th Century Fox has recreated Harold, heritage balloon with a throwback black-and-white look, mirroring how it looked on screen way back in 1947. The other floats include... No, it's just a list, Jason. Okay. <laughs> That'd be awesome, though, if it were like a whole bunch of... Uh... Like... Specifics. Details. 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 <laughs> no. Like if I hadn't have just thought this up moments before the show as And a you had like and done had some research. actually done the research that I'm asking you to do now. Like during <laughs> the, the show, show and yeah. then like bitching because the show comes to a screeching And then being upset hall. that you are not coming up with all the information I want. Right. We're also going to have Charlie Brown. God damn it. Just <laughs> uh, the elf on a shelf is going to be there. Okay. Yeah. Hello Kitty. I don't know who Sinclair's Dino is, but present and accounted for. Uh, Pikachu. All right. Ice Age's Scrat and his acorn. Pillsbury Doughboy. Mm hmm The Red. Mighty Morphin Power Ranger. Okay, the red one. Yeah. Ronald McDonald, SpongeBob, Square Plants, and a troll. Mm. Like a troll doll troll? Like a troll doll troll from the movie Trolls that came out. Is this Last a Red year. Power Ranger from the TV hey. show or from the movies? I think probably, probably from the movies if I had to guess. Yeah. Is that a, is Trolls Pixar? I don't know. I think it's Dreams Works. Dream Dream, Works. DreamWorks. Right. Actually, I found out recently the uh, the guy who played the Red Power Ranger in the new movie mm -hmm. was in Stranger Things. He sure was. Yeah, he was at uh, douche. Yeah, <laughs> that's the one. He was the douche. <laughs> Oh, uh, the the mullet guy with the uh, with the yeah with the one button button down here and yep yeah pumping iron while smoking a cigarette yeah like you do in the eighties yep yep rubbing a little cologne down in the <laughs> <laughs> like oh yeah get that cologne on there got down there okay. I think you have to whistle when you do that there you go you get right there now <laughs> <laughs> right yeah that's the guy they call it the Grundle touch.
<laughs> they got the Pillsbury Doughboy. Right, that's that's dough. <laughs> <laughs> they got the Pillsbury Doughboy. That's a classic. Uh-huh. Um... <laughs> Are you are you writing that down? <laughs> writing it down. <laughs> Hashtag Rundle Touch. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah. What else yeah, do you want uh, to talk about with the? the yeah, parade? Pillsbury Doughboy always a classic. Pikachu has become a, a big staple over the last god twenty years. I don't know. Well, I just I wonder like what the length of time on a float like. How long does it get to stay in the float? How long does it be, is does it stay relevant? Mm. Like. How long will it be before Charlie Brown is forgotten? I don't think Charlie Brown will ever go. Well, I mean, I don't know. Snoopy used to be there. No more Snoopy. Only Charlie Brown. I mean, is this like the official last last list of it? Like, I mean, I mean, they don't, don't have know. long. They should have it planned out by now. They I should. Think. I don't know. Nope. Hmm. No Snoopy. No Woodstock. No Snoopy or Woodstock. No Lucy. No Linus. Nope. Just Charlie Brown. Just Charlie Brown. And so all they've got is their staple go-to peanut from yep. the gallery. And eventually, like, people will be like, Charles Schultz? Who is that? You know, like, Charlie Brown is who that is. Fun fact about Charlie Brown. Have you guys ever heard about uh, this character called Kite Man? You know Kite Man? You ever heard of Kite Man? No. Maybe you should say it a few more times. Well, you see, is Kite it a Man. Charlie Brown character? <laughs> no, actually, it's a Batman villain. Yeah, I know. Whose name is Charlie Brown? Oh, uh. okay, that's how it's tied together. Yep. All uh, right. Tied up all those loose ends there for you. What's the right. name again? Kite Man. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, speaking of Batman villains, I uh, <laughs> just driving him crazy. Right <laughs> Yeah. Speaking of Batman villains. Yeah. <laughs> Batman villains. Yeah. <laughs> There's uh, the penguin. He's got the hypnotic umbrella. Yeah, that's that's a thing. I saw uh, the Lego Batman movie is what I was going to say. I oh, know yeah. it's like really old and no longer topical. It's still a good movie. It's still a really good movie. Yeah. Found it very funny. Uh, that's uh, Will Arnett. Will Arnett as yeah. Batman. Zach Galifianakis as the Joker, which I thought was an interesting choice, but yeah. I enjoyed him. It worked. I thought, I thought it played. It definitely what, played. It's got uh, that one kid as Robin. Yep, Michael Sarah. Michael Sarah. yeah. Rosario Dawson as Batgirl. Batgirl. My, one of my favorite ridiculous lines from a movie is, is actually from that movie. And it's uh, Bat, Batgirl is like asking all these, all these villains like what their, what their stick is. And uh, there's one villain called Orca, and he just goes, I'm a whale. <laughs> and I don't know why, but I laughed so long when I heard that the first time. I had to, like, rewind the movie to catch what I had missed by laughing so long. Yes. Well, they were going through that whole string of all of the different villains who yeah. were coming out to, like, fight everybody. And they just get into the, these long, ridiculous names and, like, most outrageous villains, yeah, and they're all real, and that's what I always yeah. thought was really funny. And one of them is just an anthropomorphic orca. Yep. There's also the Condiment King, yeah, which Jason yeah. didn't believe was real. No, I thought that was the one they made up, um, just because I recognized all of them, but the Condiment King. Condiment King was in the cartoon, man. The mm -hmm. the original Batman animated series. Yeah, that's, pew, that's pew, what pew, I'm told. Pew, 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 pew. I'm pretty sure I saw every one of those episodes, but. And you missed the Condiment I King one. I must have missed the Condiment King one. Yeah. Uh, Doesn't surprise me. Now, <laughs> uh, speaking of DC, I have been playing uh, some DC Universe Online. Oh, yeah? Recently, which is one of those uh, Mamork Pabugas. Mamork Pabugas. Quit it. And um, I know it's like an old game I think yeah it's been out a little while right 2014 or something like that uh, was when it came out for the PlayStation hmm. um, PlayStation 3 and 4 I believe are on one server and then the PCs have a, a cooler version that okay. they have their own server for of now course. is this 
like, do you get to play as the DC characters, or do you, is it one where you like you make up a character in the DC world? You make up your own character okay. in the DC world, which I prefer. Yeah, Marvel has it the other way, where you play Iron Man or you play Thor. Mm -hmm. But I feel like I want to be my own hero yeah. in the world. Like I don't want to just play their scripted stories. Right. So I would get too hung up. I just want those superpowers for real. Do you have to be a hero, or can you be a villain? No, I I play a villain. Okay. I've, I know it's a really old game, but surprise, I've only been surprise. playing it now for like two weeks, mm -hmm. uh, and it is a stream streamed like uh, slimline version of the the PC version. I played the PC version, and I remember more depth to your character advancement mm -hmm. and having the keyboard. You can hotkey everything, so. Mm -hmm. All of your abilities are available to you. In console, you're much more limited to the abilities that right. you can use on your on your controller. Uh, but still, good gameplay overall. Yeah. I've I've enjoyed the small amount that I have played it. Even though it is very much along the lines of what we spoke of last week with EA, where it is a pay to be cooler like a pay to win kind of thing yeah like there's a free version yeah but there are limits a lot of limits okay and and i've even found one scenario <laughs> where i chose an item from a list of items like select your own loot yeah and the item that i chose uh is only downloadable content item so i have to pay to unlock this item but they've also made it so I cannot trade it, sell it, or delete it. So unless I pay, I have a an inventory slot that is permanently oh, sealed by this item that I selected yeah. that I can't do anything with unless I pay to play the game. Was there, fucked up, bro. Was there any indication that that was going to be the case before you chose that item? No. That's bullshit. Yeah. And until I actually got the item and was like, tried to, mm. to open it or whatever, then... At that point, it pops up the screen that says, hey, bro, pay us. <laughs> hey, bro. That's hey, up, up, sucker. So, I mean, and I get it. You know, they're trying to make their money, just like all those other pay-to-be-cool games or whatever, and, and but, I'm getting away with the freeware version. So that, well, that's, uh, an update on the EA thing, though, by the way, mm -hmm. uh, they have eliminated all microtransactions just because really? of the, the, the blowback. They got rid of it completely. Everybody For gets now. everything right off the cuff. Well, I don't know if it's everybody gets everything, but they they eliminated the microtransactions. So like the little things that you can spend money on to make yourself cooler and like, uh, I mean, I don't know how it works in the game, but like buying credits and stuff like that with actual mm -hmm. cash. They eliminate all of that because of the huge blowback from like yeah. the money grabbing that they were doing. So uh, apparently, it's a much better experience now than for those poor saps who got it That's on good. launch day. Yeah. It's still got to suck, though, because there's still people out there who have already spent that money and they've already got those cool things, which I guess you can They would still have to get, get credit, yeah. They would have to like, get something back for that, because I would be... I, I feel like if I had bought it and played it mm -hmm. and then started spending money and then they eliminated all that stuff, I would want money back. Yeah. I would want my money back. Yeah. Like, sorry, dude, no, you were the one that fucked up, not me. Right. I don't mm. know. Speaking of DC, uh, Justice League... Yeah. Uh, came out, right? It started already. Did the it? The movie? I think it did. And apparently it's not doing awesome. No, apparently it's not good at all. <laughs> I've, I've, I've heard that Wait, it's, it's not out in terrible. the theaters? Yeah, it's out. Yeah. With Superman and Batman and Wonder Woman? And yep. yep. Did they advertise? A little bit. Yep. I, don't I think they pulled back the advertising because it wasn't well received by critics. In yeah. fact, uh, Rotten Tomatoes got... Um, it was like a 43, wasn't it? Well, Rotten Tomatoes got into a little bit of uh, trouble because... Worse than Suicide Squad. <laughs> no, they they normally, once a movie is released, well, not once a movie is released, they will release their review on a movie as soon as the, uh, the ban is lifted from the publisher. And the ban was lifted from the publisher, but they still didn't release their review of Justice League until like a day or two after it came out in theaters. Hmm. Which, like... People cried foul because Rotten Tomatoes is owned in a small part by Warner Brothers. Okay, oh. so they and were, it did not get a good review. They were covering their interest by letting it... Like, let's have a big opening weekend 
by not releasing the review about how terrible this movie is. <laughs> And then once we've at least made back our investment, then we'll release the review. Yeah. Let everybody know that it's not as great as we hoped it would be. And uh, please still come see it. Yeah, apparently so, it was an underwhelming opening weekend. I think, I think I saw it was like a $93 million domestic opening weekend, which for this kind of movie is pretty low. Like yeah. Wonder Woman made over $100 million this first weekend. I mean, and it, it's a crying shame. Because I, I really love Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman. Mm -hmm. I thought the Wonder Woman movie was awesome. Yeah. I liked uh, Superman. I liked Man of Steel. I enjoyed mm -hmm. it. Um, I didn't really care for Batman versus Superman. Um, and Suicide Squad. Suicide Squad did not really care for that either. Yeah. Wonder Woman was awesome. Really enjoyed that. And then, from what I'm hearing, you know, Justice League, not so great. And yeah. apparently they, they kind of put Wonder Woman on the back burner a little bit. And, uh, yeah, a little disappointing, because I'd love to see more of Gal Gadot yeah. as Wonder Woman, and I think we will, but I think the rest of this DC universe they're trying to build is going to die. Right. I, I don't know how these new characters have done, you know, Aquaman and Cyborg and, and The Flash. I, I don't know how they were, you know, how well they've been uh, in this movie, but... I know, based on what I've seen from Wonder Woman, they really should have played up her character if they didn't. Yeah. Um, I think but, one of the things that I noticed, um, just like in trailers and sneak peeks and stuff like that, that did bug me was uh, the way that they showed the Flash's power. Like, every time he did super speed, like, lightning would crackle around him. and oh, okay. Like, you'd always see, like, psh, psh, like right. sparks flying off of him whenever he'd do a like, little fast run. Yeah. I'm like, that's awful. It kind of ruins the whole allure of super speed. If every time you're super fast, you explode shit around you with thunderbolts. <laughs> it's not very subtle. Yeah. I don't know. That's true. Yeah. I don't it know. seems like you couldn't run through like a schoolyard without <laughs> killing a whole without bunch of killing kids. Without killing a bunch of kids. <laughs> like. Yeah. I don't know, man. That I've I've always felt that like it's one of the things I've always felt about DC is that their their animated stuff has always been so good, mm -hmm. but their live action, even as far back as as you know the original Superman movies, have been kind of lackluster. The Batman movies were typically pretty good, yeah, but that's about it. Well, I think, in my opinion, is Marvel has always managed to find a way to keep their characters grounded mm -hmm. and real. Uh, and they they do a good job in portraying that. It takes place in the real world. Uh, and they do a good job with, like, even with all of this fantastical stuff happening, of still being able to relate to the characters, of the story flowing. Yeah. The DC cartoons, they're, they're allowed to abandon all of that, because it's a cartoon. It's mm -hmm. superhero cartoon, so they're allowed to be outrageous and over the top, and uh, maybe have a few more non-sequiturs and deus ex machinas, and just yeah. like things that come in out of nowhere, uh, and it still plays really well, but they can't seem to translate it to live action because it becomes unrelatable almost as soon as they try and put an actor in that shoe. Right. I any time any DC movie, well, almost any DC movie I've seen, like it, it feels that way. It feels much more forced in the story. Yeah. Which is why I liked Wonder Woman so much was I felt like it had that very natural flow. It honestly felt more like a Marvel movie it really than did. it did a DC movie. Yeah. The way and, they developed the character, the, the the way the action sequences played out. It felt more like a Marvel movie. Yeah, and I, I never, I don't because as as big money as Hollywood productions are, and especially in comic book movies that could get up into hundreds of millions of dollars in mm -hmm. opening weekend, um, why they don't have people who are critical about the work sort of stepping in like right why would you accept a script that isn't the premium the very best script that right. like everybody agrees is the best why would you accept and and buckle in on all these different things as you're filming and when you're watching it and you're like this is kind of a ho-hum movie but now we're 16 million dollars in on it so yeah. I feel like I guess we're just going to release this crap. Yeah, and I, I feel like uh, one of the big issues that DC seems to have is casting. Mm -hmm. They have really hard time casting, which once again, Wonder Woman Gal Gadot, perfect casting, 
looks the part, acts the part, fantastic. And I thought the direction of that film was really good. Now, I don't know Very who's good. directing the Justice League. Well, it's, it's definitely it's somebody thing. different. There was there was two directors because there was I, I can't remember, I want to say it was Zack Snyder directed it originally, but then when they went to do some reshoots, they got Joss Whedon to do some rewrites and reshoots. And Joss Whedon, who did the the first Avengers, Avengers movies and and tons of other great things, um, but you know when you're when you're coming back into something that's already been done that already has someone else's vision yeah, stamped there's, onto there's it. There's only so much you can do. Yep. And and apparently, um, Joss Whedon has has been a bit critical of the movie himself, which is his right. I mean, he worked on it. Why couldn't he be critical about it? But it's definitely not a good sign for the movie. Yeah. When you have the one of the directors critiquing it like that. Yeah. And he's got a lot like, of blowback on it too because apparently he he gave like uh raving reviews about Thor Ragnarok, but then was kind of shitty about, about Justice League and a, a bunch of people kind of jumped up his ass about it. Yeah, whatever. But he's allowed to be true to himself. Yeah. But like you think about um like Ben Affleck as Batman is a perfect example, which might be changing. I, I like Ben Affleck as an actor. I like a lot of movies he's been in. Mm. The only other superhero movie he's been in, aside from these DC movies, was Daredevil. Yeah. Not good movie. <laughs> movie bad. Movie no good. <laughs> um, ben Affleck... It had some in, great parts to it. It did have some good parts in it. Some of the action was good, but as an overall movie, it was not good. Yeah. And Ben Affleck was not great as Matt Murdock. Yeah. He just wasn't. It's not his fault. You're still great, Ben. We love you. Just you weren't a good Matt Murdock. Michael Clark Duncan as Kingpin, though, was fantastic. Yeah, that was a really good touch. I really liked that. Yeah. Um, so then, like, the, the casting directors who are deciding that Ben Affleck is going to be the next Batman, mm -hmm. a lot of people raise some eyebrows about it. And once again, I don't think it's Ben Affleck having poor acting. I think his his face is just too recognizable. Mm. His His acting style is too recognizable that... Ben Affleck plays Ben Affleck a lot. So <laughs> at least he didn't give him a Boston accent. No. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't wearing a, you know, a fucking uh, Red Sox hat the yeah. whole way. Um, but even as Bruce Wayne, he still felt very Ben Affleck. Yeah. And I think it turns people off that, you know, you want a nobody to be Bruce Wayne, like really. Mm. In most of the the iterations, you have somebody who's either a nobody or is not you know, a huge star. Right. Like when they cast Christian Bale as Batman for Batman Begins, like most people didn't know who he was. Yeah, he'd been in a few things here and there. Yeah, American Psycho, he, did, he, he American had Psycho. Uh, Equilibrium, mm -hmm. I think. Uh, at yeah, that point. E Equilibrium is what got him there. Yeah. But it was like American Psycho, and um, oh man, there's one more that he was in. Reign of Fire. Rain of Fire. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, with uh, Matthew McConaughey. That's one of yep. my favorite Matthew McConaughey. Oh, yeah, right? for sure. That's a great one. That's a great one. Yeah. But he was still relatively unknown. Right. So when they cast him, it's like, we don't know who this is, but now he's Bruce Wayne. He's, he's Batman. He's, he's Batman. Yeah. Whereas you put Ben Affleck in there, so we're like, that's Ben Affleck. And he's still Ben Affleck. <laughs> <laughs> that's how it felt. He's Ben Affleck in Batman's battle armor. Yeah, yeah. exactly. He's a... Super now, the, cool Ben Affleck. The funny thing, though, is, is that the same sort of thing happened with Michael Keaton way back. Mm -hmm. Because Michael Keaton was actually known at the time, but he was known as a comedic actor. Yeah, he was known as a very comedic actor. And so then, a lot of people had issues with yeah, him being Batman. But he did a great fucking job. And a lot of people shut their mouth afterwards. They're yeah. like, all right, you know what, Michael Keaton, you got it. And for a lot of people, Michael Keaton is their Batman. Yeah, I mean, Michael he's Keaton. He's the one. He holds a, a place they, dear to my heart. And you they know? paired him with Jack. Jack uh, Nicholson, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it's... Yep. It was a, it was a strong casting. Oh yeah, on that one. And then you have Val Kilmer as Batman, mm -hmm. not terribly uh, unknown. Yeah. Not the greatest Batman movie. Yeah. Val that's, Kilmer. I that's very was... similar to Ben Affleck. I yep. feel like yeah. the Val George Kilmer Clooney, scenario. George Clooney as Batman. Yeah, that. <laughs> now Val Kilmer, I thought actually He's did a, a really great job coach. as Bruce Wayne. I thought he he didn't look the part because he refuses to dye his hair. Right, but still, like he had that. That billionaire playboy air to him. He did. He that played Bruce Wayne is supposed to be personifying. Um, but George then, Clooney was just not good all around. I thought. And yeah. Once again, I love George Clooney. I yeah. love his work. But he was not a as Batman. as Bruce Wayne and as Batman. He missed the mark in a big and, way. And they tied him up with uh, 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 Chris O'Donnell, right? Yep. 
Yeah, Chris O'Donnell that, was that, with Val Kilmer and George Clooney. Yep. Oh, was he really? Yeah. Oh, okay, I only remember him with George Clooney just because I remember the, the. I just was irritated by the two of them. <laughs> yeah, like, their, their their dynamic that they had yeah. a very whiny dynamic. Exactly. And yeah. then you threw Alicia Silverstone into the mix. Yeah. And uh, yeah. she almost got fired off of that movie. Little really? little trivia for you. Yeah. Because of for, weight gain contract. For, for a weight gain contract, oh, the man. most terrible reason in the world, and they actually. They redesigned her suit because she got too heavy for the suit they originally designed. Wow. Yep. Ugh. Rough stuff. Yeah, it is rough. Yeah. Arnold but, as Mr. Freeze. God. Just pun that movie pun is like pun. the campiest Batman movie ever made. Oh, but so in some is. ways, it's I feel like it's a better homage to like the nineteen sixties Batman than yeah. any other Batman movie to date. I actually remember seeing Batman and Robin in the theaters with my brother and my dad. And as a, and like, I mean, when did that come out? Like mid 90s? Maybe? Yeah, I was going to say it's, it's around the prime of, of live. Uh, 97. So I was, uh, ba Batman. The animated. Batman series. Forever was 97. Batman and Robin, I want to say, was 98 or 99. Okay. So I was, I was in high school and, and, you know, not, I don't know. I, I just remember coming out of that movie and going, that wasn't awesome. Like like a Batman movie should be. I, no, I like, feel like so much of it. I I remember it felt thinking so back, disconnected. I remember thinking back to like when they introduce uh, Mr. Freeze into it. Like it's it's literally Commissioner Gordon talking about me. He's like some guy named Mr. Freeze is robbing this bank. Like that's how you're introducing this. Yeah. All right, well, hey, everybody. He, he gave out crapper. calling cards. Like, the, yeah, I'm gonna be Mr. Chill. Freeze. Chill. And it was just pun after pun after pun. Oh my god! I, I feel like they were trying to take the popularity of the animated series at the time mm -hmm. because Batman animated series was off the chain yeah, in, the, in the late '90s, uh, and they were basically just trying to peel that that cartoon that you know the the crazy colors of Mister Freeze, all of his blues and his yeah. whites, and then you go to Poison Ivy with all the pinks and the greens, and it was so surreal and vain. And, <laughs> and and so like but that's why I felt like it was more of an homage to Adam West and the Adam West 1960s Batman because it definitely was not your Tim Burton Batman at all. It was like no. a far removal from the Tim Burton Batman. Yeah, all the dark tones of Tim Burton were were gone. Yep. Uh and you had all these pastels and all this like neon and yeah. just yeah. Mr. Freeze freezes the whole city. And freezes a bulldog mid leg hike, pissing on a fire hydrant. Mm -hmm. And then, when all the ice melts, not only is not everybody dead from <laughs> hypothermia, the dog finished peeing and walks away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's magic. Yeah. <laughs> it's magic oh, science. Oh, oh. Yeah, oh. bad. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, it's, back then they didn't have to. The the audience that they were playing to was just like super nerds. They weren't answerable to their audience either because exactly. there wasn't like the internet was not as strong as it is today. So they could release a bad movie and just hype up whatever they wanted to hype up, yeah. and they could still make money off of it. And they weren't held accountable. And like unless you're reading through the paper and reading the critics' reviews on paper, you're not getting the user experience. And they were just hyping up the, the actors they had. It. You know, we, we got George Clooney and Lisa Silverstone and Arnold Schwarzenegger and Uma Thurman. Look at these big names you've heard of before. Mm -hmm. Come see our movie. And this and is we, in the... and I, I was so excited as a kid for that movie. Like, are you kidding me? Yeah. And as a kid, as a dumb, wide-eyed <laughs> kid, I loved that movie. And then going back as an adult and watching all of them, it's not as great at all. It's nowhere near it. Yeah. No, it is. It is camp of the highest order. That actually reminds me of uh, when X Men Three came out, and I was so excited because I, I was a huge X Men fan growing mm -hmm. up. I was a huge fan of the first two movies, and then the third one came out. Like this is shit. Yep. I loved the second one. The second one was awesome. Yeah. First one was awesome. Third one, not so much. No. The and third, they they, they actually, rebooted it. The the reboot with uh, first class. First and class and. Um, Days of Future Past and Apocalypse, like that whole, yeah. like pushing it all that stuff back together. I think I feel like it has worked in re-energizing the franchise. Yeah, but I think in terms Apocalypse of Apocalypse, brought it back a little bit, but yeah, probably take took a few steps back yeah. there. But I mean, when you're talking about like flagpole, uh, not flagpole, but um, uh, flagship, mm -hmm. um, tentpole 
comic book movies and comic book franchises, MCU yeah. has it right now, Marvel Cinematic Universe. I would say probably the X Men for Fox comes in a close second, and then yeah. you have and the X Men is really what what pushed. I mean, we we've always had like Superman and Batman movies and stuff, but X Men is the really really what started this whole super superhero yeah. boom of because they media. were able to showcase in special effects all of the different superpowers they could yeah. use and like all of the cool special effects. And even like you go back and you watch it now, that movie came out in two thousand. It's mm -hmm. it's very dated. Oh yeah, but at the time it was. Amazing so what they were able yeah. to do. And it was the same thing with the first Spider Man movie. Mm -hmm. The first Spider Man movie came out uh, 2001 and uh, it was huge. Like, special effects were incredible. It was bright and shiny and wonderful. You go back and watch it now, it is dated. Yeah. Punisher? I was actually going to say before we wrap up, uh, have, you, have you guys started watching Punisher yet? I have not started watching no. Punisher yet. I'm yeah. about. Five episodes in. I'm, I'm ha about halfway. I was about halfway through episode eight when I had to meet you guys for dinner tonight. You bingers. Um, but yeah, it's it's good. Yeah, it's real good. I do like John Bernthal. Yeah, he's he's, he's good. great at it. It's a it's a lot of uh, dramatic build in mm. the first few episodes. Not nearly as much gunplay as one would expect from the Punisher. Yeah. From the Punisher, you would figure like, oh, episode one, he machine guns everybody, rocket launchers in the second one. Though. That's not to say that there isn't that stuff, but it's just not as much as you might expect. It's not as prevalent but in the beginning. One thing I'm really impressed with is how I know none of the actors in this, except for John Bernthal. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I I don't think I've recognized, I've recognized one other actor and I don't even know where from, but every, good. every or except for uh, Karen Page, who's been in the Daredevil or, uh, show and stuff, um, but yeah, there, there's so so many great actors that I've just not heard of, and they're doing fantastic jobs. And I'm really, I've been really impressed with this well, show. I think we all agree. Like, rather than having some big name mm -hmm. play this role, that you can't be sure that they're going to truly commit right to this the the character and repeat roles. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and and make someone's career. Yeah. Definitely. Like, you are now the face of this character. You can use that as a bargaining chip to some extent, mm -hmm. but remember, if you leave this face behind, like, that might be it for you. Yeah. So go ahead and, like, give us 10 years of being the Flash or whoever. Right. Or yeah. 10 years of being the Punisher, you know? Like, yeah. at least give us several, enough, yeah. enough material so that we feel like. You hit the mark. And yeah, so I want you they, to embody that character. I want you yeah. to be that character. And they've done great jobs. That's Like we said before, Marvel has done a great job of casting for virtually everything they've done so far. And with with very few exceptions being like Iron Fist, which he didn't do a terrible job, but he wasn't awesome. He wasn't the um, ideal pick. I feel like all the support cast was was pretty yeah. well selected really in, well in Iron Fist. Luke I, Cage I, was great. Yeah, I loved I loved all the casting in Luke Cage. I really loved the, the character of Colleen Wing in Iron Fist. I think she's fantastic. Oh yeah. Um, Daredevil. Charlie Cox is Daredevil. That, that's another one where here's a here's a guy I've seen before, but I haven't really seen much from him. Here is Daredevil doing great. Yep, he's Daredevil now. Charlie yeah. Cox is Daredevil. Oh yeah. He does a much better Matt Murdock. No offense, Ben. Sorry, Ben. Sorry, Ben. But yeah, the, no I mean, offense. but even with the the movies and stuff, Iron, Iron Man, like we knew Robert Downey Jr. before, but he was on a huge downturn until he until he went as Tony Stark, and now he's like revitalized that character in the in the comics and everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then a lot of people that they've gotten to play in those roles, like um, it's kind of um, funny, like with Iron Man speaking on Iron Man, that mm -hmm. he was always a B player mm -hmm. in in the Marvel Cinematic. And not in the Marvel the cinema, in the Marvel Universe, in the comics, he was always a B player. Oh, yeah. And now he is he's huge. number one. Like yeah. he's he's uh right now he's Marvel's Batman. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of what that character is, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but he's playing it in more ways than one now. Right. Not only as the billionaire philanthropist, yeah. but also as mm -hmm. flagship. Flagship. Yeah. <laughs> I mean the the Iron Man series and its popularity and his role as Iron Man and his popularity in that role is what generated the revenue and generated the interest to actually kickstart mm -hmm. the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yeah. But he as an actor has actually had influence on Tony Stark as a character in the comics because he he brings the Robert Downey Jr. 
to Iron Man yeah. and to Tony Stark to a point that it is now reflected in the comics. Tony Stark was never as smart mouthy as he is now. He was right. never as um, just loud and exuberant like he is now. And Robert Downey Jr. has influenced that character in the comics as well. So now Tony Stark in the comics kind of acts and looks a little bit like Robert Downey Jr. Yep. I'm I'm hoping that uh, we don't lose Cumberbatch uh, for Doctor Strange because I feel like he's one of those fellas that may just kind of like fall out of the role or they're, whatever. They're, they're entitled. They they like when they bring on these guys in the universe. They sign contracts for yeah. so many films. Like um, Iron Man, uh, Robert Downey Jr. had signed on like after the first two, I think. He signed like a six picture deal, mm -hmm. so he was going to be in six movies. I and that. I want to say he's fulfilled that obligation now. Like you had by now, yeah. Iron Man Co two, Iron Man three, Avengers, um, the other Avengers, the other Avengers, <laughs> Captain America: Civil War. Yeah, you think they'll ever do like a Hawkeye, like get, Spider Man, get Jeremy Renier? I Jeremy I see Renner. them doing. I I would love for them to do a Hawkeye. I would love for them to do a, a, a Scarlet Witch or not uh, Black Widow. They would never. But they would never sell. I think no superpowers. I think what would more likely happen is they'll do a movie of a couple of those characters together, like Hawkeye and Scarlet or Hawkeye and Black Widow. You know, and yep. and maybe even like a prequel thing because they're yeah, throwing like I, ass to them. That's what I was looking throwing at, like a at. Vision and a Hulk in there. I think yeah. that'd be good. Like the characters, they don't plan on giving standalone movies. Mm -hmm. They need to give like their own separate movie. Apparently, too. I've read recently they're talking about doing a Hulk trilogy. Well, I, I see Based with on. Mark Ruffalo as Bruce Banner, mm -hmm. I could see that working. Yeah, I could see that happening and working. Um, but they were so apprehensive for the longest time because Hulk movies traditionally don't do well. It's because they were bad. Well, I think also Hulk. <laughs> God damn it, <laughs> Hulk as a character, like that origin story, mm -hmm. uh, it's not very conducive to. Relatable because you he turns into a big dumb green animal. Yeah, uh, can't speak, can't emote. He's just a rage monster, and we're getting to a point now. Sans spoilers, that uh, the Hulk can do a little bit more, has more personality, right. um, and can carry more of a story as the Hulk and yeah. not just as Bruce Banner. So I think it it could be successful if they're carrying it on this same trajectory. Like, if they're using the same timeline and using Mark Ruffalo, for sure. Well, that's it, man. That's it for the show. Proper anger management techniques. Yes, also that. Yeah, that's that's what the Hulk is really about. Yep. What'd you learn tonight? Um, I learned that uh, he doesn't care for deviled eggs, and you don't like it with relish. That's true. Yep. And me, I'll take them any way the devil wants me to have them. <laughs> the devil's eggs. The devil. Okay. Just... Uh, I learned that there's a Rocky Horror Potter show. It's, it was just the one time. Yeah, I mean, there may be a repeat one, yeah. but there once was a Rocky Horror Maybe Potter show. Maybe they'll do another, show. Once upon another pub crawl a time. leading up to a Harry Potter thing. They'll do it again, I don't know. Yep. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I didn't really learn much except for you guys like disgusting deviled eggs. <laughs> And that's basically because I just reminded him yeah. seconds ago. Yeah. Uh, so uh, what about I you? I learned that uh, we can go on and on and on about Marvel movies and go overtime on this show if we just keep talking about them. Yeah, yeah we definitely can. It's yeah. things we're passionate about. Yeah, that's true. We got any hashtags or anything? That uh, yeah, we got hashtag sorry not sorry. Very common. Mm -hmm. We also have hashtag Grundle Touch. <laughs> so you guys right. enjoy and that. And hashtag um, we still love you, Ben. Uh, even though your Batman is shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hashtag. Yeah, on that, on that, good night. <laughs> good night, everybody.